Have your seats, have your seats. I'm going to try to wrap all this up in a nice 10-minute sermonette. Help you and I appreciate that there are many ways. Everybody say many ways. Many ways for the story of resurrection to play out in your life and in our lives in ways that are most relevant, transformative, hopeful, and dare I say, salvific. Turn with me in your Bibles real quick to John chapter number 12. John chapter number 12 helps us, I think, to tie all of this in together. The book of John is one of these earliest records of the resurrection of Jesus. And, and so I, I invite you to, to imagine that what we're reading and hearing are from folks who have eyewitness accounts that are actually uh, connected across time with other folks who have heard those accounts and continue to speak on them. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite um, theologians and authors from the second century, his name is Irenaeus. Just say that with me, Irenaeus. Irenaeus was actually a disciple of uh, Polycarp, who happened to be a mentee of John, the evangelist who wrote this text. And so in the second century, uh, Irenaeus began to talk about the power of the visitation of Jesus and his subsequent resurrection that created what he would theologically call divinization, this idea that Jesus, the Son of God, became human so we as humans can become like God. And that the whole spectrum of Jesus' life was intended to cover all of the bases. Everybody say all the bases. All of the bases. So whether you are experiencing your highest high or your deepest low, Jesus came and covered all of those bases. So as a point of fact and experience, no matter where you are in your journey, Jesus has been there, has literally uh, uh, spanned that spectrum of your experience and now you are never in a place where God has not been. That's some of Irenaeus' work. And Irenaeus was a disciple of Polycarp, who was a disciple of John. And that's why I like this text for us this morning. John chapter 12, the scripture boldly says, Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat or a seed is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over in the same way anyone, everybody say anyone, anyone who holds on to life just as it is, destroys that life just as Oh, I'm sorry, just as it destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have that life forever, real and eternal. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So just for the few, few moments we have remaining, I just want to wrap all of this up through this kind of title of Igniting Resurrection. Bow your heads and let's pray, just pray real quick. God, thank you for the word. Thank you for the, the testimonies that have already come through. Thank you for the bold proclamation of, of, of our desire to have dreams and be relevant and, 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 and live into the possibility of the new. And so, God, I pray that as we have read your word and as we teach and preach your word, that you will send the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. May it rest upon me and even the hearers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray that the people of God say amen. Give your neighbor a quick high five and tell them ignite resurrection. Tell them again, ignite resurrection. One of the most difficult dissonant realities for you and I. Pretty much you've heard and hopefully experienced 
a lot of it already today, is this notion that even when we are living the best we can and perhaps even following after the ways of Jesus, that we will have a certain dissonance as it relates to the truth that death often is a process that brings life. And for most of us, we are doing everything we can to run away from death. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They're, they're, and matter of fact, if you're someone who is running toward death, folks will kind of label you like reckless, right? And you kind of probably, you know, somebody who is, who is uh, not, uh, you know, got a big, big company of folk, amen? Because even some of our loved ones who we work with who are caught in the cycle of violence, if you talk to them, they'll tell you, you know, Rev, I'm doing this because I'm trying to live. Amen. You know, a lot of folks be like, oh, these folks out here doing this crazy stuff, they must not want to live. But if you talk to them, they're like, man, this is what I got to do to actually live. So even some of our loved ones who are caught in some of these deadly, lethal, or unhealthy cycles, sometimes it is only, that's the only path they know yet. And yet is such an operative word. Because as long as you and I are alive, how many of you know there is always a possibility for the new to begin? <laughs> On this day, though, it's important to appreciate that as we focus and highlight resurrection, it is not, though, to be done at the expense or to trivialize death. But it is done in a way, hopefully, that allows you and I to see that loss and struggle, disappointment, trauma, and pain do not have to be the period in our lives. The resurrection reminds us that even though the empire thought they won, even though the enemy of Jesus, the adversary, and it's important to say, the devil, Satan, Beelzebub, Lucifer, mm -hmm, was Jesus' enemy, but was not Jesus' equal. See, often we think like, you know, the devil and Jesus are like, you know, they're to balance each other. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus, you know, could, could, could do a whole lot to the devil if he wanted to. That's what I tell so many folk I be in meeting with. Now, you know I could do something to you. If I wanted to, praise God. You ever met somebody like that? It was like, you know, you think you're all bad, but you know, I give you these hands, praise God. In Jesus' name, of course. In his name. Talk about back in the day, you know, Wayne's Day. <laughs> Jesus and the devil are not equals. The devil is Jesus' adversary. And guess what? Death is not your equal. Depression is not your equal. Lost transition, disappointment is not the equal of the child of God. They are just your adversaries. And what resurrection does is it reminds us that Jesus took the best shot of his adversary and still won. You see, Resurrection does a whole radically different power shift in the imagination and the lived reality of those who literally want to embrace its truth. Because it is not the glamorous uh, marketing budget, the great preaching and crusades of the early church that caused the early church to explode throughout the region. It was their, their conviction that even when they died, they were going to rise again. And the way they lived in the face of death and disappointment and loss was so compelling to their, their counterparts in other cultures and places and religious orientations, they said, what kind of honor is that? 
that even when you are in the Colosseums facing down all of these threats, that you can stand there with enough confidence to sing praises and hymns and confess that the one who was dead and is now alive has the same power to raise me up even if you take my life. That's some radical living. And you and I must appreciate that on this resurrection morning, our lives are very much informed as followers of Jesus by this same power. Our life has the potential to keep producing because of resurrection power. And this then, I think for us today, offers an amazing gift for how then we are to live. Because as the scripture says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground, unless your life, which is a seed, falls to the ground, it will not produce much fruit. Many of us are believing that the best way for our lives to progress is to keep trying to add to it incrementally the things we don't already have. <laughs> it's like an insatiable appetite for more. But the way of resurrection says that the way for you to reproduce is to first bury your life. And the deeper you go, the higher you will rise. I want you to think about this for a second. You know, I, I shared earlier this morning, you know, about roller coasters. And how many of you have been on a roller coaster and you, you, you know, you, you, you was excited about it. You looking at the roller coaster and you know that it's got all kind of ups and downs and twists and turns. And it's all an intellectual exercise that gives you lots of thrill until you get on it. <laughs> Amen. You standing in line, man, we used to go to Great America, you just be standing in line, folks will stand in line. We went to one of these music parts, and I just said, the devil, why are we standing in line to just terrify ourselves? <laughs> Intellectually, it sounds like a good idea until you get on the roller coaster, and you realize that you can get up real high, but inevitably, you must come down. And the journey to the high is usually a lot slower. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Oh, hey, and you're watching it now. You're watching them go chicka, 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 chicka. And you stand in line, ooh, that's going to be good. Chicka, 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 chicka. Ooh, ooh, and you, you know, you're sitting in your pot next to you. Ooh, I can't wait. This is going to be good. Ooh, and then as soon as Even though you can anticipate that it's coming, your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul ain't ready for it. Am I talking to somebody's life experience today? I want you to know, child of God, that this is a possibility, a truth of what resurrection offers you and I if we take seriously this idea that every part of your life is a seed. You know, uh, whether good or bad or happy or sad, call it the gospel according to Al Green, right? <laughs> Every part of your life is a seed. And many of us, we want to hold on to the good seeds. And we trying to run away from the bad seeds. But I hear God saying, just take all your seeds and bury them deep in the soil of God's power and promise. Now, I, 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 I did a, a little bit of research and studying on how seeds work because I knew I was going to use this as a prominent metaphor. So the first thing you need to keep remembering is that your life is a seed. You're producing seeds. What will you do with these seeds? I was in a conversation with some of my native loved ones. They were talking about how in their society, pre-colonialism, <laughs> before all the colonists came, and, 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 and sadly, some of us have become the colonists. Man, just colonizing everything. 
Amen. But they used to tell me nothing in their society was wasted. Even we were having a conversation about, you know, how did they deal with harm and how did they deal with criminals, quote unquote. And they said, we figured out a way to reintegrate them into our communities. We didn't throw anybody away. There was no throwaways in our societies. Even with the waste, the scraps from our food, our human waste, we figured out a way to recycle everything so nothing was wasted. And I began to just think about what would it look like if I really believed that every part of my life was a seed that never was wasted. That God can take everything I've endured the addictions, the losses, the, the bad decisions, the triumphs, the, the, the successes, the promotions. God can take all of it and put it in the ground. And as the scripture says, unless it is buried and dead, it will not produce new life. This PhD Botanists, amen. This morning I was describing them as a plant biologist. I didn't, uh, you know, I forgot that they actually got a, a name. But a botanist with a PhD in plant physiology, he says, this is what it says, I'm just, I'm just plant physiology. <laughs> that the seed dying in the ground buried is actually a miracle because inside the seed there is an embryo in every seed. This is what the botanist physiologist from the plant university says. <laughs> that inside each one of these seeds a little embryo exists that has its own on and off switch. And as it buries itself into the ground, it must stay there, listen, for 40 days at 40 degrees. It can't be in the ground for 20 days at 40 degrees or 40 days at 20 degrees. It has to be in the ground for 40 days and 40 at 40 degrees. And when the timing happens, the embryo will begin to produce a, a plant life that shoots, listen, deep and high at the same time. And I began to think about what kind of amazing gift can the seeds of our lives produce when they are buried in the promises of God in a way where they go deep and they help you rise at the same time. I think this is what some of our elders and our mothers get to, you know, because you, any of you ever had a, a big mama, a grandmother, and they just, oh, baby, everything's going to be all right. You feel like, it's not. Oh, yes, it is, baby. You're like, no, it's not. Oh, they trust me, it's going to be all right. You're just like, what? Maybe they've lived life long enough, and they've had enough seeds buried that it went deep through all of the the, the vicarious nature of their life, but it also helped to go high, to be connected to the source that makes all things new. If your life, our lives, our experiences, our seeds, I want you to appreciate, loved one, that these seeds must go deep. And guess what? The deeper you go, the higher you will rise. The question many of us must answer then is, what are the practices that we must put into place to ensure that we're going deep and high at the same time? Resurrection Sunday is great. Easter Sunday is great. We love it. We do all we can to make it a meaningful experience for you because we know for some of us this may be our, 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 our only real 
kind of experience for lots of different reasons. We're traveling, we're busy, and, 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 and on and on and on. But I want you to know that you don't have to wait till Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday to experience the deep power of God's seeding and the inevitable rising that results from resurrection. This is what it means to have our stories speaking for us and bearing witness to these truths. I'll end with this old Easter sermon homily that I found. It's not even attributed to anyone because it, it's just so old. But I love the words that are proclaimed. Jesus says, I did not create you to be held a prisoner in hell. Rise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. Rise up, you who are the work of my hands. You who were created in my image, Arise and let us leave this place. What place is that? The place that cannot hold you. Yeah. Graves aren't meant to produce life. But you can bury your seed in the soil and it can produce life. Don't put yourself in a grave when God is asking you to put yourself in the soil of his promise. Just makes me believe that not all burials are the same. Yeah. Mm. You get buried in a grave and it's probably the end. But you get buried in a soil with some seeds. I'll give your neighbor a high five and tell them the best is yet to come. Arise for you and I are one person and we cannot be separated. Come on, stand to your feet, everyone. I, I, I was thinking about the, what kind of power, what kind of resurrecting power was manifest for trained soldiers these are people trained to kill to harm to defend on Easter morning the power and the glorious expression of resurrection caused them to be paralyzed and play like they were dead I prayed I said God let that power be at work in me that all of my enemies become paralyzed by the power that is at work in us bringing us back to life. Your whole life, nothing is wasted. Everybody say that nothing is wasted. Say it again, nothing is wasted. As a matter of fact, your whole life ignites resurrection in the ground, the soil of God's potential and promise. The same spirit that raised Jesus can raise us from the grave. Because death could not hold you, you down. down. You are the pray right now that the loved one who I am touching today, the loved one who may have heard a part of their journey in the stories that were proclaimed, 
in the art, the music that was offered. In the scripture that was read, I'm touching them and right now, God, they may need to be reminded that the life that they want can only happen if they release the, release the life that they are currently holding on to. May they surrender to you, God. May they take the good, the bad, the happy, the sad, the ups, the downs, the spectrum of experiences, and may they see them as a seed that can be buried in the soil and can produce fruit. Fruit that never withers, never dries up, never goes away. Speak to their heart today and remind them that death never has the final say. Remind them that the same power at work in you is also at work in them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now lift your hands, everybody, in this building. God, it's me, and I stand in the need of prayer. It is not my mother. It's not my father, my sister, nor my brother, but it's me, oh, Lord, and I need you, Lord. Somebody say, I need you. Lord, I need you to resurrect the things the enemy has tried to stifle the things the enemy has tried to keep in dead places. I pray, God, that the graves that some have put me in will never be mixed up with the soil you seek to plant me in. Give me an exchange so I may experience your newness, the newness of life life everlasting and life eternal and we'll say thank you lord hug two or three people and tell them let's ignite resurrection tell them that let's ignite resurrection let's ignite it let's ignite it you are the living